NATO has activated its response force, the first time the alliance has ever activated the 40,000-man force for a deterrence and defense role. The push toward Kyiv reportedly going slower than the Russians had expected, especially in the past 24 hours. The Pentagon saying there's been greater resistance by Ukrainians than the Russians. We are planning for. It appears the Russians have lost a little momentum. A senior defense official telling us only about a third of the 150,000 troops amassed on the border are actually fighting. And as of now, Russia has not committed the majority of its forces inside Ukraine. Thousands of Russian Navy infantry, infantry landed near the coastal city of Maripol, which could see heavy fighting. And about 200 ballistic and cruise missiles fired at targets in Ukraine, some of which have hit civilian areas. Joining us now with the very latest, ABC's Phil Lipoff, who's in Poland for us, ABC's Aaron Katursky in Lviv, Ukraine, and White House correspondent Mary Ellis Parks here in our nation's capital. Thanks all for being with us once again. Aaron, I want to start with you. State Department officials saying that Russian troops are still advancing on Kyiv. What's the latest from there? Kyiv came under heavy bombardment earlier today, Kira, and then there was something of a pause after we heard evidence of heavy fighting and artillery on the outskirts of the capital city. It's believed that the, the Russian troops paused their advance to resupply, to reinforce, and that's now believed to be completed. There was some talk of a, a diplomatic solution or some willingness on the part of both Presidents Putin and Zelensky to have some conversation, but the pretext for that uh, made us think that maybe this was just a, a stall tactic on the part of the Russians, and, and Putin may not be interested in any kind of a diplomatic solution. So it's believed that sometime soon, uh, possibly within the next 24 hours, the Russians are going to resume their assault on Kyiv. They're already in the outskirts of the city, and we're told they may have as many as 10 entry points planned where they could simultaneously enter the capital and try to take it over. In just the last little while, Ukrainian President Zelensky posted a, a selfie video uh, right outside of his office, and, and he was surrounded by Ukrainian officials, and he said, we're all here, we're all defending the country. The U.S. believes the Russians may have been slowed down a bit by the ferocity of, of the Ukrainian defense. Ukrainian citizens have been given weapons, they've been given instructions how to make bombs out of bottles filled with gasoline and a dish rag. But Kira, the Russians have tanks. Well, let me ask you about this video that we're looking at uh, that the president did post. I mean, how's that impacting morale? Well, I think it's a, it's a morale boost, or at least it's meant to be, uh, that in the 30% uh, pay hike for Ukrainian military troops that we're starting to hear about now. But Zelensky has said he is target number one, and he wanted to show that he's not going anywhere, that he is going to remain in Kyiv, remain with the people, even though it's, it's widely believed here that, that the Russians do want to remove him and establish their own government here in, in Ukraine. It's just, it's so wild to see the video. How often do you see that on behalf of a president? You know, Mary Alice, the UN Refugee Agency, estimating that some 100,000 Ukrainians now, though, have already been forced from their homes. So is the White House planning to step in in any way to attend to this? Yeah, Kira, for the last few weeks, we've been hearing reports that the State Department and USAID have been pre-positioning resources to try to help with a pending humanitarian crisis. And yesterday, the White House did announce that there would be a 17-person uh, team, a disaster relief team sent to Poland. I asked Jen Psaki there in the White House briefing room if 17 people was remotely enough. She said, of course, no, this was just one step that the White House was committed to continuing to help with humanitarian assistance. They are very worried that this will soon escalate, not only to such an unbelievable sort of military scene, all this violence on the ground, but a humanitarian crisis as tens of thousands continue to flee their homes. Well, Phil, I know that you can weigh in on this and the refugees, the thousands that have fled already into Poland where you are. Tell us what you're seeing and, and what you're hearing now. Well, Kira, Mary Alice lays it out uh, really well. You, you gave that 100,000 uh, number of people being displaced from their homes that the U.N. is talking about. The U.N. also says that 50,000 people have already crossed borders. Uh, and, of course, one of the borders they're crossing is the Polish border. And we're in uh, Lublin, just about 60 miles from there. 
This town that I'm in, this city, is about 300,000. Poland as a whole, we're told, has about 2 million Ukrainians living here. So many of the Ukrainians that come across the border will have family and friends to go to, but those who don't. One aid worker has told ABC News that the Polish government is setting up these um, reception centers. They are not meant to be camps. They are not meant to house refugees, but they're reception centers to help transition Ukrainians who come into this country into what they do next. As for how many this country can hold, we don't have numbers on that yet because we really don't know how bad the crisis is going to get. We do know the line to get into this country uh, in a car is miles long. Uh, our Matt Gutman was on the border showing the, the trains that people, hundreds of people coming off the trains, sleeping on the trains. Uh, and this is just the second day of Russia going into Ukraine. And already we're seeing tens of thousands of people cross the border. So Kira, it, it no doubt is going to get much worse. All right, and Mary Ellis, finally, before we let you guys uh, go, a senior official apparently signaled that Putin is not interested still in a diplomatic solution. I think we already knew that. Russian troops are now said to be resupplied and uh, planned to, uh, these entrance points into Kyiv. Uh, can you get what more can you tell us about this? And how do you think the Biden administration will respond to these latest moves? Yeah, Gary, I think that's the million dollar question. The White House was asked repeatedly yesterday if anything would change the U.S. assessment to not send American troops to Ukraine to support Ukrainian military operations. The White House said nothing would change that. The president has said repeatedly that Americans are not going to fight Russians, that when Americans and Russians start shooting at each other, that's World War III. And so barring supporting militarily, what else can the United States do? There's going to be continued pressure for any last sanctions that they can think of, potentially covert plans to try to bolster Ukrainians' military in other ways. But I think we're also going to have to be paying a lot of attention to this NATO response force, like you said. It is very possible that many of the 8,000 American troops that were put on heightened alert earlier this year will be called to Europe to support these NATO operations to make sure that the NATO borders are secure. Okay, we'll all stay on it, of course. Aaron, Mary Alice, Phil, uh, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.